Okay, per request, in this video we're going to be analyzing model Alessandro della Sola and I'll show you the arrangement of photos I've picked out. So we have this frontal photo which has minimal lens distortion. We have this one in black and white which we'll use sparingly. This one, this one is clearly a selfie so it does have lens distortion. So we won't really be working with this, but I'm just showing you. And this one also. So I went ahead and calculated all 44 measurements. And let's begin. So this is the side profile. We'll just use this one. So to begin with the side profile, I'll just say that his score is exceptionally high in the side at 92.1%. So his side profile is virtually flawless. His brow inclination, or how uh, slow back his brow is, is perfectly ideal at 22 degrees. So it's not too slow back or too forward, and we have to measure that relative to this plane. His brow angle, or this nasal frontal angle right here, is what it's called, is about 113 degrees, which is highly masculinized and you can see that he has a very prominent brow ridge. So that is definitely an attractive and dimorphic feature, meaning it masculinizes his face. And that will add to his overall objective attractiveness, even beyond the measurement, as it gives the appearance of more deep-set, masculinized eyes. His nose is very good overall, with an ideal nasolabial angle, of about 104 degrees, and that is this angle here, approximately. His facial convexity, or how flat his profile is, is perfectly ideal. It is slightly more rounded than a lot of faces we've analyzed, but it is about 168.7 degrees is what I measured it at. So that's in the ideal range, neither too flat nor too rounded. And the same can be said about his total facial convexity with the nose about 148 degrees so not too rounded or too flat his nose assessments are all perfectly ideal and his nasal projection is this measurement here and I'll just list I'm not going to go through the measurement the proportions are ideal so his nasal projection of 0.62 means that his nose is slightly more protrusive but in the ideal range. His lip assessments are overall good, not the most ideal, but overall good. The one flaw was his E line, which is this line here, and you can see that the upper and lower lip are about the same distance away from the line. Ideally, the upper lip would be more uh, behind that line. So I think to more idealize his side profile, his nose would be slightly more protrusive like this, and that would just better harmonize with the side profile. His nasal mental angle, which clues us into the harmony between the nose and the chin, is slightly unideal at about 133.9 degrees, and ideally it would be between 120 5 and 132, but anywhere from 120 to 132 is quite normal. So this is only a slight flaw, only a bit outside of the range. His jaw angle is a very difficult to measure in this photo, but it's very clear that it's ideal and there's no jaw deficiency. We can measure it in this photo, although it's not fully front on, but just for reference, just to show you. If the angle is about 123 here, it's going to be lower when the face is fully side on. It's just how the lens distortion and the angling works. So I extrapolated that his jaw angle is about 118 degrees, which is masculine and ideal. His jaw is not too downward grown or too flat, so that is also perfectly ideal. And his ramus, or this back portion of the jaw, 
label of the ramus is very elongated at about 0.76 times the mandible and it doesn't look that way in this photo but if you measure it fully side on that's where it is and, and the ramus has a lot to do with facial attractiveness so typically the most attractive faces have very long ramuses because it overall adds volume to the jaw so let's go into Photoshop and depict what it would look like with a weaker ramus. So the ramus is the back portion of the jaw. If we make it shorter, it just overall reduces the volume of the jaw body. And we can do that also by making the ears larger. And we can make the gonion higher. Now, he's still obviously attractive, but it more resembles a weaker jaw shape so look at the contrast there this would be more of what a ryan gosling has for example and this is similar to a henry cavill or an, it's basically an ideal jaw so the general idea is that his jaw is perfect and lacks flaws altogether Everything else was in check in the side, so like I said, 92% side profile score. Now let's move on to the front. So we'll mostly be working with this photo. His neck is ideally wide at about 94% of facial width. His jaw is also ideally wide. His chin to filtering ratio is slightly lower, but it's in the ideal range at 2.14 times his filtering. And his filter is slightly long, but not a big deal. One flaw, and we'll see how that uh, also affects his facial thirds, is that his face is too short. And actually, I'll just measure it here to double check. So we measure the total facial height, 356, divided by 274. And yes, it is too short at about 1.3. So what this means is that his face is not a long face shape. It's more of a compact face shape. And it actually still looks a bit long. And that is because his mid face ratios are not as compact as some other faces. So 1.3 is not that short. It's just a bit away from the ideal range. Ideally, it would be about 1.33 to 1.38. And let me just update that score briefly. I had it at 1.28 before. Okay. Now, similarly, his facial width to height ratio. And this is the mid face we were talking about. This divided by this to the mid brow is 1.83, which is the same in these photos approximately. It might be slightly lower or, or higher. Actually, I think it's 1.83 here, and slightly lower here at about 1.81. So the ideal range is about 1.9 to 2.06. So his mid face could be slightly more compact, and we noted how that was because his filter is a little bit longer than ideal. Ideally, it would probably be like over here. And in the same vein, his mid face ratio, which is this measurement divided by this measurement, is 0.9. So he has a slightly longer mid face than ideal, but not a big deal as the ideal range in males is 0.93 to 1. And in women, it's a lot higher at 1 to 1.1. A major strength of his, and clearly why he can model, is that his cheekbones are extremely high set. And the widest part of his face is very close to his eyes. And they're about 89%. So very high cheekbones. Another minor flaw 
or a moderate flaw actually, is his mouth width to nose width ratio. So his mouth is 1.66 times his nose, which is the highest I've seen in a male, I think. And we'll see why that is. His mouth width is ideal. As you can see, it reaches to the colored portion of the eyes. But his nose width is slightly too narrow. His nose could be about one or two millimeters wider, probably extending over here. And that would just make his ratio more ideal. Overall, his nose is just a bit too narrow for his face, but it's not a big deal. And like we mentioned, the forehead affects his total facial width to height ratio, and it makes his face shape a little bit too compact. So his facial thirds, this is his upper third to the globella, globella excuse me, 26.6%. So that's a very short forehead, meaning it strays about 3.4 or 7.4% from one third, which is quite a big deviation. And it means that his facial thirds are a bit out of harmony and not in sync with one another. And his middle third and lower third are about the same at about middle third is 37 percent and his lower is 36.4 so they're about the same overall his forehead is just a bit too short his lips are one of his stronger points the proportion is ideal in that his lower lip is 1.77 times his upper lip height and there is clearly a defined cupid's bow We touched on the mid-face ratio already, and his eye spacing is perfectly ideal. So we measure this distance, called the interpupillary distance, divided by the bizygomatic width, or the width of the face, and that is 44.4%. So right at the lowest end of the ideal range. And what that means is that his eyes are closer set relative to his wider bone structure. but within the harmonious ideal range, so they're not overly close set. And that is just a masculinizing feature to have closer eyes relative to facial width. And in terms of one eye apart, his eyes are about exactly one eye apart. And you can see that here. So that is perfect, no deduction there. His eyes are definitely one of his strongest points, although he doesn't have much deficiency anywhere his jaw and his eyes. When you're at this level of attractiveness, typically you're gonna have a top tier jaw and eyes. You're not really gonna lack one or the other. His eye tilt is perfectly ideal. It's a bit difficult to measure as his lids kind of, let me show it over here. They kind of cover the outer eye corner, but it's still measurable as the corner would be about there you can see where it is generally and his eyes are perfectly tilted at 6.2 degrees so not too upturned or too droopy and one of the most interesting things to note is that his eyes are highly masculinized in terms of shape so we measure that the eye aspect ratio is what it's called we'll do it over here we measure the width of the eye and we divide it by the height, so the width divided by the height. And his are 3.5 times wider than they are tall, which is highly masculinized. And the ideal is about 2.8 to 3.6 in men, and a little bit lower in women. Women tend to have more rounded eye shapes. His eyebrows are very low at about 0.4, meaning they're 0.4 eyes heights above his eye line. And the last flaw and the last measurement we're gonna to touch on is his jaw frontal angle is slightly too low, just ever so slightly. And that is this angle here. So clearly he has a very defined sharp jawline, but his angle 
when I measured it is about 80 degrees, 80.2. And similar in this photo, you can see that the angle is just a bit too narrow. And what that stems from is that his chin width is very broad. And that is also a masculinizing feature and desirable. So there's not all negative in this case. A wide chin, you can imagine, makes the jaw frontal angle lower because the angle closes in. You can imagine if the chin is narrower, the angle would be more like, and wider, it would be more obtuse compared to this. So, yeah, that covers it. I think we'll do a quick Photoshop before going to the score and show you what a slightly more idealized version would look like. So what we have to do is increase the forehead height since the total facial width to height ratio was a little bit lower. We don't want to overdo it. So if this is about 1.28, go like here, and that should balance his facial thirds more and make, it might not even be ideal, but it's close enough. We can also make his nose wider, like we said, just max that out a little bit. And this should be fine for now. We can also take away some of the eye bags. They're not that big of an issue, but clearly eye bags are not ideal. You'd rather not have them if you had the choice. So we remove these. It's not perfect, but it's a little bit better. Okay. And what else can we do? trying to think so we'll just depict the changes here so that's the original after it's not going to be a major difference but I think at this point it actually looks a little bit too perfect and the overall score we'll just go back to the original so his overall front harmony score is a 74.3% definitely a lot lower than his side and that was mainly due to a lot of smaller flaws he doesn't really have any large flaws at all just smaller less ideal flaws and the overall score is an 81.2 percent which is very high and enough to be in top model territory and this is about the same as someone like Brad Pitt or Rob Lowe for example so definitely high facial harmony and his overall facial attractiveness we said the harmony score is about an 8.1 his overall facial attractiveness would be a bit higher than that because he has objectively attractive features like dark eyebrows dense eyebrows he has a desirable lip shape ideal facial hair development in a male and those add to his facial attractiveness so it would add about 0.4 or so points bringing him to an overall rating of about 8.5 which is extremely high and about if i had to remember off the top of my head one in a hundred thousand people which is extremely rare in top model territory that's all for this video if you'd like to order a facial analysis please do so in the description below keep suggesting these faces because i do like making these videos thank you